It's happening again. We are embarking on another one of those national experiments in which everybody who watches conservative media, everybody who gets their TV news from the Fox News Channel, everybody who lives only on the right side of the dial, is about to start talking about things in our country in a way that makes no sense to anybody who does not watch Fox News. It's happening again. Just like they did with Acorn, just like they did with the new Black Panther Party, just like they did with the fake sting videos about that guy who didn't actually wear a pimp suit into Planned Parenthood, just like they did with the Van Jones panic and the Shirley Sherrod panic and all these other stories that were not actual news, but which Fox News hyped for its audience until they became the most important stories in the country for their own audience, even as nobody else watching any other source of non-right-wing news had any idea what they we're talking about. That is happening again. What they're doing this time is that they are trying to take us on a new national trip, like they've done before. But their new one involves accusing President Obama of terrorism. The president is a terrorist. They say he is a political terrorist. And not just they're not just saying this on the sometimes wacky Fox News website, um, but they are saying this on their primetime programming. This is their wacky website reporting on what's been happening on their primetime programming. Uh, this is Frank Vandersloot. He's a national finance co-chair for the Mitt Romney for President campaign. He's one of Mitt Romney's gazillionaire campaign donors. Mr. Vandersloot's the CEO of an Idaho-based company. Uh, he has been politically active, particularly on issues surrounding gay rights in Idaho over the years. And he has not been on the pro-gay rights side of those matters. Uh, we've reported on uh, Mr. Vandersloot and his political activities uh, on this show twice, once in February and once again earlier this month. Mr. Vandersloot is now the star of the new Fox News hyped alternate reality conservative media scandal that makes sense to nobody outside the conservative media sphere. CEO of a health-related company says his business being attacked after he donated money to the Romney campaign. He gave a million dollars to a super PAC supporting Ben Romney and soon after found himself listed on an Obama campaign website. The campaign posted a website with the names of private citizens who gave big money to support Mitt Romney and described those donors in less than flattering terms. Flashing red sirens, Fox News <laughs> alert. Private citizens, if you donate to the Mitt Romney campaign, the president of the United States is coming after you. To be clear, what Fox News is talking about here is uh, a blog item posted on April 20th at a website called KeepingGOPHonest.com, which is part of the Obama campaign. The item profiles a number of the gazillionaires who are bankrolling Mitt Romney's effort to become president uh, in this post-Citizens United world that we are all living in, where donors can give infinitely. Frankly, getting to know your presidential candidate means getting to know their gazillionaire donors. And in Mitt Romney's case, among those donors is Frank Vandersloot. And he is not just a campaign donor, he is a campaign official. He is the national finance co-chair of Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. So he is not a random private citizen being dragged into the public arena. He's already in the public arena. He put himself there. He is a campaign official. And so his politics are totally germane to understanding the politics of the campaign the campaign of which he is an official. Still, though, it, 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 it is palpable. Fox News is so excited to have a possible new Barack Obama scandal to talk about that in some cases it seems like they have just rushed to get the story onto the air before even they totally understand it, before even they have figured out the basic facts of their supposed scandal. Case in point. So I want to get, I want the folks to know how intense this became for, for you. You're, you're a big Obama fundraiser out in Idaho, correct? Uh, Romney. Right, right, you're a Romney supporter. It's Obama who's the bad guy. Right, got it, okay. Uh, Frank Vandersloot, as you just saw there, appearing with um, Fox News' Bill O'Reilly last night. Um, this is one of five segments Mr. Vandersloot has done on Fox in this little flurry of attention uh, so far, just in the past few days. But last night with Mr. O'Reilly, uh, he explained how this one blog post about him as a Romney campaign official, uh, he explained to Mr. O'Reilly how this has essentially ruined his life and his business. Did it impact your business directly? 
Well, it did right away. The first day, phone calls started coming in. And we had customers who said they wanted to cancel, people who didn't Because understand. you were a mean guy. You're a rat. They wanted to cancel because you're just a lousy guy. They read that on the net. Well, they, they hit me first with, they said that I hated gay people and I was anti-gay. which so you're anti-gay. So anybody who was buying your products who were gay said, oh, I'm not going to buy the products from this well, guy. We have a lot of people we work with and right. deal with in the so business world. they basically world. slimed they, you. They smeared you. They did? They slimed you as if you were anti-gay. They made that up out of whole cloth. Why would they say this untrue thing about you? It's not really a rhetorical question. That is a question with an answer, uh, which Mr. O'Reilly had at his fingertips in the form of transcripts from his own Bill O'Reilly TV show. Uh, as the website Media Matters first reported today, Mr. Vandersloot actually appeared on The O'Reilly Factor in August of 1999 to talk about his public campaign against the gay. Mr. Vandersloot had just helped finance these billboards to go up all across the state of Idaho, warning about a public television documentary there that promoted the, quote, homosexual lifestyle to Idaho kids. After helping to put up those billboards, Mr. Vandersloot appeared as a guest on The O'Reilly Factor to inveigh against efforts in Idaho to, quote, bring the homosexual lifestyle into the classroom and introduce it to our children as being normal, right, acceptable, and good. Mr. Vandersloot said of the documentary, quote, it's propaganda. Any child watching this film will conclude at least that this homosexual lifestyle is correct. He described homosexuality as, quote, contrary to the moral standards of our community and nation. All of that happened on Bill O'Reilly's TV show. So anybody who was buying your products who were gay said, oh, I'm not going to buy the products from this well, guy. We have a lot of people we work with and right. deal with in the business world. So they basically world. slimed you. They smeared you. They did? Dude, you have interviewed the guy before about what he thinks is so bad about being gay. It can't be a smear if it is a factual part of his record, which you put on the record. We asked Mr. Vandersloot um, about his involvement in that anti-gay billboard campaign in Idaho, and he just this year uh, gave us this statement. He said, quote, I am a strong supporter of the argument that gay and lesbian people should have the same rights as all other Americans. My argument against It's Elementary, the documentary, was not against the film itself, but with its intended audience. I don't believe that sexual concepts, either homosexual or heterosexual, should be introduced in our schools to first, second, and third graders. I would endorse It's Elementary for adults, but most Americans would agree it should not be shown to little kids. But again, Fox News has not bothered to let the details around this thing get in the way of the good story here, right? A, a good scandal about the president having some kind of enemies list. After a Wall Street Journal columnist named Kimberly Stressel wrote about Mr. Vandersloot being a victim of this enemies list, Fox News was so excited to put the new conservative media scandal on the air that they couldn't even figure out that Mr. Vandersloot was the supposed victim here and Kimberly Stressel was the columnist writing about him. Okay, so Kimberly Strassel is the person writing about Mr. Vandersloot. Mr. Vandersloot is supposed to be the Obama victim here. Writer, victim. Watch how they handled this on Fox. They're so excited they screw the whole thing up. There's also something about some uh, Romney supporters that I think is significant. This Kimberly Strassel is coming forward saying that she's been smeared uh, in her life because of her support for Mitt Romney's campaign. Her name down as a donor finds out that uh, there's super PACs going around in her background to find out what she does and what she does want to do. No, 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 no. That's not even, not, even not even close to what you want to be able to say. Kimberly Strassel isn't the donor. She's the person at Rupert Murdoch's Wall Street Journal who's been writing about the donor. And the donor is actually a campaign official, not just a donor. And his name is Frank. Kimberly's writing. It's a totally, uh, never mind. Fox News is very excited about this scandal that they have uncovered. This scandal um, that, as exciting as it may be, you should know is not true. It is, in fact, false. But the way it's unspooling is telling about our politics right now and about how the conservative media is working in our politics. Again, the claim from Fox News and from Mr. Vandersloot, the basic allegation here, the scandal that Fox News has discovered that you will soon see in an email from your crazy conservative uncle is that for the crime of being a Mitt Romney donor, Frank Vandersloot is now the victim of terrorism. Some believe this is economic terrorism, uh, not economic, political terrorism. 
that, that, that targeting a businessman like you, running an honest business, uh, because of your freedom to donate who you want to donate to, but try to ruin you personally and professionally, that's terrorism, political terrorism. Terrorism. President Obama, of course, in the case is the in this case is the is the terrorist because of what President Obama has done uh, because because of what Frank Vandersloot ha has done to support Mitt Romney. The allegation is that Frank Vandersloot is being singled out. It's hurting his business. People are asking all sorts of questions about his past. People are saying that he's anti-gay when he totally isn't. Barack Obama put Frank Vandersloot on an enemies list. He was targeted for retribution. You say, look, I'm just an honest businessman, all right? Now, what happened to your business in lieu of that? What happened? Well, when I first saw the list, I thought, oh, oh I, uh, this is scary. And within hours of that, then all kinds of things started appearing on the Internet, uh, suggesting all kinds of accusations uh, against me, uh, uh, rewriting history, as it were, about all kinds of things I was supposedly guilty of. And um, did it impact your business directly? Well, it did right away. The first day, phone calls started coming in. And we had customers who said they wanted to cancel. But we lost a couple hundred customers uh, so far, and then we started getting that turned around. See, according to Frank Vandersloot, as soon as President Obama put him on this enemies list, his business suffered. That's the scandal here. The president targets a private citizen, and then that private citizen's entire livelihood is threatened. Flashing red light, somebody called Drudge. But you have to know that that whole line that a private citizen targeted, that private citizen's livelihood is threatened, his business is being affected, his private life is being pried into. That's also what he told us, too, months ago, months before President Obama was even conceivably involved, before that blog post even appeared on the Internet. We heard from Mr. Vandersloot and his lawyers soon after we covered him on this program back in February. We reported on Mr. Vandersloot back then in his capacity as Mitt Romney's national finance co-chair. We discussed his history and political causes in Idaho, that billboard that we showed you earlier, as well as his efforts to discredit a gay journalist in Idaho whose reporting Mr. Vandersloot disagreed with. Mr. Vandersloot and his lawyers attacked our reporting. They asked us to pull it down off the web. They claimed specifically that our reporting on him had had hurt his business, that custom of her, customers of his had called up and canceled based on our reporting, that we were to blame for his business suffering. That was in March. Now Mr. Vandersloot says none of that started happening until after President Obama's campaign blog mentioned him in late April. Mr. Vandersloot is changing his story. Well, when this list came out, when this, uh, yeah, there were only eight people on it, I was one of them, and so when I first learned that I was uh, on his enemies list, that really worried me at first, I'll tell you. And and my first anticipation was that, yeah, I've got a target strapped to my back. And sure enough, then the attacks started coming. Then the attacks started coming. Not when we reported on him back in February. And when other news outlets like Glenn Greenwald at Salon.com and Mother Jones reported on him back then. But rather in late April, right after President Obama's campaign reelection team posted that blog item on him, that's when it all started. Mr. Vandersloot has reinvented his story, and he is taking Fox News along for the ride. Well, he gave a million dollars to a super PAC supporting Mitt Romney, and soon after found himself listed on an Obama campaign website. CEO of a health-related company says his business being attacked after he donated money to the Romney campaign. The Romney campaign finance co-chair has reinvented this story now to say all of these repercussions for him and his private life and his business started months after he used to say they started. He's now saying that the stuff he started complaining about back in March actually didn't start until late April, until after the president got involved and now the president is coming after him and every American should be afraid of the president. Frank Vandersloot is not just the CEO of a health-related company in Idaho. He is not just a Mitt Romney supporter. He is not just some private citizen who has been targeted randomly by the Obama campaign because they're thugs. He is the national finance co-chair of the Mitt Romney campaign. He has been given a leadership position in the Mitt Romney campaign. He is an official in the Mitt Romney campaign. And whether he likes it or not, that makes him a public figure. That means that his record is up for public discussion, particularly given that he has chosen to involve himself in such political causes over the years.
And Frank Vandersloot's role in this year's presidential campaign is that he will now be the star of the new Fox News scandal about Barack Obama. Five segments and counting so far on Fox News about how President Obama is a terrorist and the target of his terrorism is Frank Vandersloot. There have been five segments so far. Mr. Vandersloot has appeared in three of them. A private citizen who has nothing at all to do with politics other than being the national finance co-chair of the Mitt Romney campaign. Five segments segments and counting later, now Fox News has their brand new Barack Obama scandal. Some believe this is economic terrorism, uh, not economic, political terrorism, that, that, that targeting a businessman like you, running an honest business, uh, because of your freedom to donate who you want to donate to, but try to ruin you personally and professionally, that's terrorism, political terrorism. Frank Vandersloot, a victim of terrorism. Now, how do we wage counter-terrorism in this case? Very specific answer to that. Mr. Vandersloot, after all, is the national finance co-chair of the Mitt Romney for President campaign. That means his job is to raise money, and that is exactly what he has been doing with this story on Fox News. Watch. Here's your check to uh, restore our future, right? I, I think the only response Just hold it to up this, here. I think the only response is <laughs> to make another donation, $100,000, right. and uh, yes. I would like to invite everybody, I mean, if they want to attack me, I don't suppose this is going to, like, reduce the attacks. No, it'll probably uh, mean, accelerate them, but uh, you're, you're a stand-up guy. Look, but, if Romney wins, you're being uh, what they call tall cotton. But I perhaps run. everybody else can donate in peace. We thought we were done with our donations. We thought we had done our part, but uh, clearly... Um, we're going to stand up and get more involved in this campaign. And we hope that other people will join us in that. Everybody should get out their checkbooks. Everybody should get out your checkbooks? Oh, that's how this ends. That's where this goes. Giving Mitt Romney money is what Frank Vandersloot and Fox News say is the cure for this victimization tale that he appears to have reinvented out of thin air. Get ready for that email from your crazy uncle about this. It is coming. Joining us now is Salon contributing writer Glenn Greenwald, who has also reported on Mr. Vandersloot's political positions and activities. Glenn, thanks very much for being here. It's nice to have you here. Good to be here, Rachel. Um, Frank Vandersloot um, appears to be saying now that he is being victimized by the Obama campaign. They say that the Obama campaign is targeting him to keep him and other private citizens from donating any money to the Romney super PAC. Does that comport at all with your understanding of uh, the timeline of Mr. Vandersloot's political activities and his aggrieved sense of them? It's really hard to believe that even people who sit in front of the television watching Fox News all day can be moved by this story. I mean, here's somebody who has, over the last decade, used his vast fortune to dictate the outcomes of some of the most controversial political debates in, in Idaho and elections in Idaho, and now he's insinuating himself into our national election in a really extraordinary way, spending in excess of a million dollars and counting to install somebody into the Oval Office. So the question of whether this is a person who's a legitimate subject of media scrutiny in terms of his beliefs, his prior actions, his ideology, his agenda, whether that's a legitimate subject for, for scrutiny is, is so absurd. I mean, to ask the question is to answer it. I mean, he has the right under our campaign finance laws and, and under the Constitution as the Supreme Court has interpreted it to donate unlimited sums of money to help elect Mitt Romney, but he doesn't have the right to do that while hiding in the dark. Um, and I think it's not just the right, but, but the duty of media outlets and even opposing campaigns, both for Obama funders and Romney funders, to shed as much light as possible on who these people are and what their interest is in funding these campaigns and, and who the people are to whom these politicians will be beholden if they, if they win election. It, it, when you Google the name Frank Vandersloot as of today, uh, the top results are about uh, Frank Vandersloot speaking out about being targeted. Um, it, might that be how this Fox News hype scandal uh, benefits him? I mean, it does. He is trying to affect and, uh, and actually, I think, create a narrative around himself as a victim rather than as somebody who is using resources uh, to, to affect political change. 
Well, he's clearly very concerned about the damage to his reputation. This is somebody who has lived in a cocoon that comes from being one of the richest people in Idaho, who's never challenged, who throws his weight around. We got the same kind of threatening lawyer's letter as you did once we reported on him back in February. Um, and you know, I think there's a couple of amazing ironies here. I mean, one is that if you look at what happened in the 2008 presidential election, almost every single one of of the people even remotely associated with then candidate Obama was put under all kinds of microscopes. Not people just who were closely associated with him like Jeremiah Wright, but even remotely related to him in some way. People like um, Rashid, Khalid Rashidi and, and Bill Ayers and all kinds of people. Fox News led the way in those kind of investigations of private citizens. Bill O'Reilly has done all kinds of quote exposés on George Soros on the grounds that he's trying to fund our democracy and buy our democracy. And yet here they are the minute that happens to a conservative funder and they act as though the McCarthy Commission has been rejuvenated. And the other irony is that Frank Vanderslut himself is somebody who has spent a decade really engaged in campaigns of intimidation and bullying against people who are defenseless in Idaho, journalists and bloggers and just ordinary citizens who say anything negative about him routinely get threatening lawyer letters threatening to be sued. And, and people in Idaho, if you go there, as I did in January, are petrified of even writing about him. And yet the minute somebody turns around and not threatens to sue him, but simply says, we want to look at what your beliefs are, what your interests are, what your agenda is, he suddenly turns himself into this very petulant, entitled victim. And, and it's really amazing to watch. Salon.com contributing writer Glenn Greenwald. Uh, Glenn, thank you for your reporting on this. Uh, I know you and I have talked about what it's like to get the lawyer uh, backsplash whenever you mention this guy's name. But uh, I appreciate your sticking with it and being willing to talk to us about it tonight, Glenn. Thanks a lot. Same to you, Rachel. Thanks. Thanks. I should mention um, that when we asked Mr. Vandersloot to be on this show today, we initially got a letter um, saying Mr. Vandersloot will not appear on tonight's show. The Maddow Show has knowingly presented false information regarding Mr. Vandersloot in both of its prior segments. I deny that we have said anything false about Mr. Vandersloot, and I would look forward to being disproven by him. Maybe I'm about to get the chance, because late tonight, the hour in the hour before the show is live, uh, Mr. Vandersloot did offer to come on the show tonight by telephone. I would like you to be on the show properly, Mr. Vandersloot. As soon as we can arrange for you to be in front of a camera for a proper amount of time for us to discuss these matters as fully as you would like to, I sincerely look forward to that opportunity. Tell me where I'm wrong, sir. We'll be right back. 